God bless you all in the name of Jesus. I'm glad to see everybody here. This is going to be a good time in the presence of God and we are going to grow, we are going to learn and become everything that God wants us to be as the Spirit of God leads us and He helps us. I want you to share this, let somebody know, that will let somebody know, that will let another person know that the prophet is live and uh, I know the Lord is going to bless us. We are going to see definitely the hand of God and we are going to mature uh, in ways that um, are beyond really extraordinary because it's the will of God for us to consistently and continually mature and grow in Him. So it is always exciting uh, for me by the grace of God whenever we get time to be live. Um, I celebrate God for it because it's an opportunity for us to grow and become more. So I want you to let somebody know um, that we are live. I want you to share this. I want you to send this to somebody. Let's keep the thumbs up going. And I believe that the Lord Jesus will be glorified. Now, today's subject is, is very interesting. And, um, and the title itself uh, says the story. And I will tell you some things that um, have helped me personally in my walk with God and in great times of doubt, especially in my genesis, in the genesis of my, um, of my calling. And when I'm talking about calling, I'm really speaking about when God told me to start Revelation Church. What I went through, how I had to, how I had to battle a lot of things. There's a lot of fights that I had to have. Um, not just spiritually, but mentally. There was a lot of stumbling blocks I had to overcome. Because one of the most difficult things as a child of God, you will come to understand, especially if you are genuine about your walk with God. The problem is we have so many that are not genuine about their walk with God. You have to remember that to be genuine is the, is the foundation of maturity with God. To be genuine also brings honesty. To be able to assess yourself will permit you to either grow or to fall or to remain in the same place or to wither away. And one thing I've learned about spiritual things is that if it is not increasing, it is decreasing. It doesn't just stay. Now, I had a lot of battles. I had a lot of battles because, number one, when God appeared to me when I was six years old, I didn't know what a prophet was. I didn't know what that is. I just knew that God who created heaven and earth has appeared unto me. The Lord Jesus has appeared unto me. But I didn't know that is called to be a prophet. I didn't know what any of these things mean. Now, in the same vein, God started to require of me certain things and I myself, looking at where I am, I started to wonder, am I even fit for what God wants me to do? Do I have enough time to execute what God has for me? Because you have to remember, spiritual growth requires time. It's not an overnight thing. You see, when the Holy Spirit comes into your life, and this is the mistake that believers make, the Holy Spirit being in your life or you receiving the Holy Spirit does not mean you have matured as a believer. It means you have received a teacher. Because the primary duty of the Holy Spirit is to teach you. It means you know nothing. But in the church, whenever somebody can just, oh, riba shabada bahaya, they believe you are spiritually mature. No, that's not spiritual maturity. Spiritual maturity is observed by your ability to empower other lives in finding the Lord Jesus. That is the meaning of spiritual maturity, that the life of God that is in you can be transferred to others and others also can be made alive. 
That is what it means to be spiritual mature or to be spiritually mature. That's what it means. Praying for many hours doesn't mean you're spiritually mature. It means you have discipline, but it doesn't mean you're spiritually mature. Fasting for 40 days and 40 nights is good, but it doesn't mean you're spiritually mature. It means you have great willpower. It means you're determined, but it does not equate to spiritual maturity. We know the maturity of the Lord Jesus in the spirit. We know the maturity of Moses. We know the maturity of Elijah because their life could be transferred to others and others could be made perfect in Christ. So receiving the Holy Spirit, it means you have received a teacher. Now you have started your journey of being perfected in him. So, but at the moment I didn't know this. So I was looking at my life and I know we are called to be conformed to the image of the Lord Jesus. And it bothered me a lot because I was like, man, I have missed so much. Yes, God appeared to me when I was young. But I didn't have a teacher. Somebody who could guide me, show me things. I kind of had to figure out things mostly by myself. I thank God for my uncle and other people that God um, put in my life. But... I just was like, man, I have missed so much time because now that made me start looking for how did Jesus grow up? Mm, It made me curious. That's good, yeah. Okay, we know nothing about Jesus' childhood, so I want to know if I am called to be conformed to his image, If I am called to be like him, then I need to figure this thing out and I need to figure it quickly. How was Jesus as a child? Because if you look at most men of God in scripture, honestly, their birth is announced in between stories you know nothing. You just see them in their assignment. But I didn't care about anybody else. I cared about the Lord Jesus because that is my role model. That is who we are called to be like. That is who the Father wants us to conform to. So I said, let me find out. How did Jesus grow up? So in my quest to search... That is when I started discovering about the Dead Sea Scrolls or what is called the Apocryphas, the books of Enoch and all that stuff. Now, I want you to understand that there is great danger. There is great danger in the pursuit of knowledge. I will say it one more time and I want you to hear me with everything that is in you. There is great danger in the pursuit of knowledge. Adam and Eve fell because of the pursuit of knowledge. Knowledge is not bad. But knowledge must always be seen through the eyes of wisdom. Mm. That's good. If you pursue knowledge without a filter called wisdom being your anchor, you will find yourself in a very, very dangerous place. Most are possessed by occultic spirits. I'll say it again. Some people are not possessed by lust. Some people are not possessed by witchcraft. 
Some people are not possessed by sorcery. Some people are not possessed by uh, um, the spirit of stealing or killing. Some people are literally possessed by an occultic spirit. When Adam and Eve were in the garden, the devil introduced them to an occultic culture, an occultic way. What does the occult mean? Let me use Webster Dictionary for you. Can you find it for me, somebody? I just want you to read to me what the occult means. I don't want to say it and then people will think I'm talking about something else. But I want you to understand what I'm saying because it is very, very important. We are going to go deep into this thing, but I want you to have an understanding of what I'm saying. What is the definition of the occult? It's secret knowledge, but I, I want somebody to read if um, you have it, yes. Okay, I have it. It mm -hmm. says, to shut off from view or exposure. And another one says, not revealed or not easily apprehended or understood. Ah, occult simply means secret knowledge. Knowledge that has not been given to you. You see, God has secret Informations. In fact, he says it all the time. He said, what is revealed, what is hidden is for God. What has been revealed is for us and our children forever. But God is always in a state of revealing based on his will, his desire, and the maturity of whoever he's dealing with. So the word occult itself simply means secret. Now, Adam and Eve were enticed by secret knowledge. Oh, God doesn't want you to know this because on the day you know, you will become like him. So to imply that God is keeping something from you. And that thing is the difference between you and God. How do you know that an occultic spirit is ministering to you? When your walk with God is no longer about loving God, is no longer about the salvation of souls, it is no longer about being effective for God, the moment it begins to become about how powerful you will be, how people will see you, and how you become so much more than other people, an occultic spirit has already seduced you. An occultic spirit is already calling to you. And this spirit, what it will do is, it will make you step in the wrong place in order for you to fall into a trap. Now, let me explain this. I'll try and explain this briefly and try to help you understand this. There is a big difference between devils and demons. Devils and demons are very different. They are not the same. Even though scripture uses them interchangeably because of translation, but if you know spiritual things, you know demons, devils, unclean spirits, uh, evil spirits, all these are not the same. They are not the same. Fallen ones. And when I talk about fallen ones, I'm talking about devils. I'm talking about angels that lost their place and they were cast down on earth. Let me give you a little more background to help you understand this. You have to understand that the devil is an angel called, or is a kind of angel we call cherubims. Cherubims are in the first choir or the first gathering of angelic beings in the high heavens, meaning they are ranked a higher, theoretically. Not the highest, but they are among the high angels. 
The reason why he can control the other spirits is because what he possesses, not only in knowledge, especially in knowledge and in wisdom, based on his place, that he was placed before his fall, it allows him to have control of lesser spirits because you notice he's the only cherubim that fell. He did not fall with other cherubims. If he did, there would be a rivalry. Because he's the only one, he is superior than everybody else that fell with him. So the other ones have to do what he wants because he possesses something they don't have based on his position. Now, when the angelic spirits were cast out of heaven or the angels were kicked out of heaven, that's the right term. When they fell, they corrupted other spirits on their way down. I think I'm going to stop there because I don't want to end up deleting this video. Uh, let, let me skip this part. Because many of you don't understand the spirits that possess people enter their bodies. It is the spirits of the giants. It's the Nephilim spirits. Fallen ones don't need to possess you. They don't need your body. They already have bodies. They are not bodiless. Satan doesn't need anyone's body. He possesses a body. It is not an earthly body, but for him to enter you is actually a restriction of his ability. Mm. Yeah. Lucifer to enter you is like, why should he? He already has a body. He doesn't need to possess somebody. If he, if he has to possess you, he has literally downgraded himself. Am I speaking to somebody? Yes. The ones who need your body are the ones that used to possess bodies before and now they don't. They can't go into heaven. They can't go into earth. They are damned. They just run around the earth causing havoc because they have no rest. So when the Lord Jesus was saying when an unclean spirit leaves a man, he goes into the desert and seeks for rest and he doesn't find one, it goes back to possess the same house again. Notice, his desire, their main goal is to have a body. Why do they need a body? Because they used to have one. This is why when those spirits enter you, you want to drink alcohol. You want to use drugs. You want to do unclean acts. You want to do all sorts of things that are of the flesh. If a fallen one begins to influence you, he won't influence you merely for you to drink, to steal, to kill. They are trying to control cities and nations and bring them all into the lake of fire with them. So for them, just getting one person is not enough. This is the work of the lesser spirits that they control. Am I speaking to somebody? This is why it's so funny to me when people say like, okay, let me ask you, where did marine spirits come from? Where did marine spirits come from? We know marine spirits exist. Do we? Uh, I don't like this. Let me talk to the YouTube people. People who come in, if they're not going to be responsive, don't let them in, please. <laughs> I don't want a dead class. Let me talk to the guys online. Where did the marine spirits come from? Huh? Sorry? But where did they come from, though? Okay, so were there spirits in the water? Yes, there are good ones and bad ones. Okay, but how did they become bad? Because they were You see, now you're wise because now you understand. Marine spirits didn't just appear. There were creatures in the water that did different things. Their fall corrupted a bunch of them. Just like in the land, just like in the, in the land, in the mountains. There are spirits that were corrupted. I can show you scriptures for days. It's just I don't want to go into too much of that. 
Are you understanding what I'm saying? Yes. Now, the danger, hear me and hear me well. The danger is to be found vulnerable. Listen, all evil spirits are terrible. Terrible. But the worst ones are the fallen ones. The worst ones are the fallen ones. Can they do me a favor? Can they keep that door open? Because the opening and shutting, it's kind of distracting. The one out there. The fallen ones are the most dangerous ones. You will need divine, super divine intervention for you to break from them. It will take God himself. Now think about it. The prince of the power of the air, Gabriel could not do it himself. Michael had to show up. It tells you the level of power these guys have. My, my, Gabriel comes down and the prince of the power of the air resisted him and withheld him. He could not penetrate. He was fighting and he could not penetrate. Michael descended. Michael held him up and he went to deliver the message and then he came back to help Michael finish the work. These are not jokes, people. Because occultic knowledge is from these guys. They are the guys that inhabited the heavens before. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody? The ones below don't really know too much. The ones that fell are extremely dangerous because they are the ones that lived in heaven before. Mm -hmm. This is why when you read scripture, you realize that devils rule over regions. They don't run around on the ground. They rule over regions. That's why God asks Satan, where have you been? He said, moving to and fro on the earth. And uh, have you seen Job? Yeah, I've seen him. How does he have a count of everybody? How does the devil know everybody? Because there are spirits that are reporting to him. This is why when you go to impoverished places, there is a spirit there. You go to wealthy places, there's a spirit there. You go to certain... If you are sensitive, you can tell there is a, every neighborhood, every region is controlled by a spirit. Mm. So the fallen ones are extremely dangerous and the fallen ones are masters. Masters of lowering people because they know human beings love knowledge. If you're on YouTube and you can hear me, type number one, type number one, type number one so that I know you can hear me. Type one if you can hear me. Type one if you can hear me. Type one if you can hear me. I want to know if you can hear me, if you can capture me, if you can receive what I'm saying. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Keep liking the video and share the video as many times as you can. I feel like this thing has to be deleted, actually. Hey. Yeah, because it's going to get more sensitive. So it's either I dilute it. Now, now, hear me. Hear me. Fallen ones control knowledge. That's why you find that the Bible says, 
Um, we do not we speak wisdom to them that are perfect, not the wisdom of this world. Can you go to First uh, uh, Corinthians two and verse six? I want to show you where this is shown. Okay, I have it. Mm-hmm. First, oh wait, sorry. One First second. Corinthians chapter two verse six, and can you find also? For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Somebody else get that one too. Mm-hmm. First Corinthians two six. Mm-hmm. Okay. First Corinthians two six. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, mm-hmm. yet not the wisdom of this world, mm-hmm. nor of the princes of this world, mm-hmm. that come to naught. Mm-hmm. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, mm-hmm. even the hidden wisdom, mm-hmm. which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. Okay, notice. There's a knowledge that the princes of this world, the rulers of this world know. But this one they did not know because the fallen ones don't possess it. So Jesus coming, they knew he would come. They could tell his star has arrived in this realm. But they couldn't tell where he was. They could estimate what age he had. But they could not tell you the exact age he had. So their knowledge was limited. The wise men, or what we call the Magi, had the ability to know more because the Spirit of God, there was an angel that led them. Is this making sense so far? Yes. Now read for me the Ephesians, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. I thought we already had it. Ephesians 6.12. Mm-hmm. Ephesians 6.12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against... Can we fix that before we read, please? Mm-hmm. No, no, you can put it on her. She just... Sorry? Oh, okay, 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 okay. Okay, Okay. Okay. do Do you you have it? Okay, go for it. Ephesians Mm 6.12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Oh. Notice it falls to human beings. Mm. Rulers of darkness of this world. Because we have rulers of darkness of other worlds, but we also have rulers of darkness of this world. Notice it's telling you specifically of what world. Mm. Amen. Amen, yeah. Now the question is, what is darkness? Read it one more time. (laughs) Ephesians Mm -hmm. Mm 6.12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, Mm -hmm. but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this Mm -hmm. world. Mm -hmm. against spiritual wickedness in high places. Notice it's still breaking it down. There is rulers of darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. Wait, 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 wait. Rulers of darkness of this world. But they have appointed other people. Spiritual wickedness in high places. Haven't you noticed that every evil thing that is about to happen in the world, there's people who know. Before COVID came, how many people are talking about it? There is a virus that is coming this for years. Dang. This is something that these guys arrange. But where is the understanding or what the maneuver should be? Who is putting it together? Spiritual wickedness in high places that have received information from rulers of darkness of this world. The fallen ones are the ones that are ruling. My God. But they're behind a veil. That's mm. why they're called rulers of darkness. You don't know right, who they are. Right. That is why you just speak of certain Ooh. families. Oh, the, the, the Ravchas or that family or this family. They're the ones that control them. Who appointed them? Who chose them? Dang. My God. There is too much mystical and strange things that are happening and Many are being lowered into the occult without even knowing. You know how these spirits work? They see your desire for something. They seduce you. And then what is inside of you begins to call into the other one. Because remember, deep calleth unto what? The deep. So they have to make you 
desire something so that they can plant the seed in you. And before you know it, you're starting to look for something. Man. Yes. So what does darkness mean? What does darkness mean? Go to Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, mm -hmm. and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Now, stop right there. Darkness is not created. So how can there be darkness? Mm. Because you think... You have to, let's, let's talk about creation. Meaning nothing is existing unless it is made. Where did darkness come from? Because it doesn't tell you when it was created. So is it talking about the absence of light or is it talking about something else? Something else. Mm. Mm. Read it one more time. Yes. Uh-huh. Genesis 1, verse 1. Uh -huh. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Mm -hmm. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. Mm -hmm. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Where is this darkness coming from? What is the darkness? What is darkness? Because you have to remember, darkness is, is taught or is given two contexts in Scripture based on what is written. Number one, the only darkness that Christians seem to speak about is the darkness in the negative sense, meaning evil but darkness the absence of light is not evil so how does the bible mean that this is evil darkness is evil is talking about things that are working to destroy you that you cannot see so it calls it darkness because when you're in the dark you cannot see you can't tell so when it's saying that uh, spirits of darkness or powers of darkness is saying that these guys are out to kill you, but the way they kill you mm -hmm. is to make you not see. You will not notice them walking around the corner, but they are killing you. Oh my God. That is why when we say dark forces, we mean. That's what the Bible means. It's not merely speaking about the absence of light. No. That is for the realm of men. It just means they are operating beyond the veil because God himself dwells in darkness. Mm. Uh -huh. mm. I'll say it again. God himself dwells in darkness. Why are you looking for God if he's there to be found? Mm. Why are you seeking him? Hello. Yeah. Oh. I, <laughs> I, YouTube, are you there? I feel like I'm talking to myself. We're here, we're here, we're here. Why are you looking for God if he can be found? He says, seek me while I can still be found. Uh -uh. Where are you that we have to look for you? <laughs> Man. God himself dwells, dwells in darkness. But you have been taught darkness is the absence of light. No, because we know God is light. In him there is no shadow of darkness. But I will show you verses that God actually lives in darkness. Yes. <laughs> First Kings chapter 8, verse 12. Actually, First Kings... Chapter 18, verse 11. First Kings, okay. chap, no, uh, no, uh, no, Psalms 18, yeah. verse 11. Psalms 18, verse 11. 
Psalms 18 verse 11. Okay. Psalms 18 verse 11. Uh-huh. He made darkness his secret place. Wait. So when you're talking about he who dwells in the secret place of the Mosai, you're trying to go into darkness. Yes. <laughs> uh, I'm talking to the wrong people. No, help you us, see, help us, <laughs> why can't the devil find you when you're in the secret place? Because that is a sick, that is a place so beyond good. his own jurisdiction. Yes. He doesn't know where that is. Yes. Witches can't find you there. Amen. Wizards can't find you there. No one can get you can destroy the devil and he doesn't know where the shots are coming from. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Oh Lord Jesus. You have even misunderstood. You think light means brightness. Mm. Jesus said, I'm the light of this world. He came into the world. Nobody knew him. Yes. <laughs> so is light light or light means something else? Yes. Mm. Uh, you see, I'm talking to the no, wrong people. To us. And the Bible goes as fast to tell you, and the light is the life of all men. All men on earth are using that light to be alive. Every soul, whether they are born again or not, it is his light that is making them alive. Mm. But we are still looking for light. Yeah. So is light light like the brightness that we are seeing or is light something else? Mm. Uh, this video is definitely being deleted. <laughs> for sure. You thought the secret place is a place of light. The devil doesn't approach light. That's a lie. Anything that is in the light can be accessed. Mm. Mm. Wow. Man. Anything that is in the light has been revealed. Mm -hmm. It is no longer a secret. That's good. When the Bible says light and darkness do not dwell together, you have misunderstood. Mm. You are thinking that light and darkness dwelling together, you don't understand what the Bible is trying to say. You are thinking, yeah, the dry light is driving away darkness. Those two cannot be. You are not understanding the context. Because God is light and he dwells in darkness. Yes. Please read uh, Psalms 18 again, 11. Yes. Mm -hmm. Psalms 18, verse 11. Mm -hmm. He made darkness his secret place. His pavilion around about him were dark waters and thick clouds of the skies. So, is God sitting before crystal sea? Or dark waters. <laughs> <laughs> what are dark waters? Man. Ah, listen, this spiritual thing is not a joke. Guys, hear me. Hear me. Man. Hear me by the Spirit of God. This is why, this is the reason why I laugh at these people. You know what? I don't, I don't blame them for thinking I'm a wizard. I would think so too if I had the knowledge they have. Man, that's facts. That's facts. It's not their fault. They're just children. Yeah. They may Amen. be old in age, but they are kids. Mm. Yeah. And when it comes to, remember me, by God's grace, God planted me in this thing since I was six. Yeah. So I'm more seasoned by God's grace. Even me, if I was them, I would have thought I'm a wizard. <laughs> it's really not their fault. God dwells before dark waters. So he's not just somebody you can walk to. First of all, he's hiding. But if you find him, you have to walk through dark waters to get to him. Yes. <laughs> what is he talking about? Then you realize, was it Isaiah that was told, come deeper, come deeper, walk deeper, and the waters got here. Go walk deeper, the waters got You, you are thinking it's about clear or ocean blue waters. You, you are deceived. You are misinformed, sorry. <laughs> Somebody wrote the Yokozuna of Revelation. <laughs> ah, Uncle Ezekiel was told, walk in water. He was afraid. Come deeper. Come deeper. It's like, yo, what are these waters? Dark waters. 
Please read it one more time. Yes. Read it one more time. I think I'm going to have to do a part two of this because I can't even Amen. get to where I want because of time. <laughs> Keep, keep going. Uh -huh. All right. Psalm 18, verse 11. Mm -hmm. He made darkness his secret place. Mm -hmm. His pavilion round about him were dark waters and thick clouds of the skies. At the brightness that was before him, his, th his thick clouds passed. Notice, Hail there is brightness, but he is in the dark. So if you found light, you have not found him. Wow. wow. Yeah. Yeah. My God. Meaning the things of God will usually sound more evil. Right. Not because Dang. they are evil. Man. Man. This is why the Lord Jesus is sitting with these guys, giving them bread and everyone is happy. Then Jesus leaves them. They come looking for him. They say, Lord, where are you? This is, he said, I've been here the whole time. You guys don't want the real Man. bread I want to give you. Mm. He said, then wow. give us bread or show us a sign. Mm. Jesus said, unless I give you my flesh to eat. Yeah. In fact, he says it this way. My flesh is true meat and my blood is true drink. If you eat my flesh and drink my blood, then you have life. Do you know what they said? He has a demon in him. Yeah. Because this is a doctrine. This is a demonic doctrine. You read in the Old Testament, you shall not let your children walk through the fire. You should not do this. You should not do that. These were wicked practices. But remember, the fallen ones who have been in heaven know about some of these things. They know what it provokes spiritually. So Jesus comes and said, you need to eat my meat and drink my blood to have life. <laughs> then you notice people who are in the occult kidnapping little children sacrificing children and even old people, eating their flesh, drinking their blood. This is a practice that is in the occultic, demonic world. It's real. But Jesus is coming with the same thing. Man. Teaching. So many of you don't, this is why many of you don't know what discernment is. You think discernment is using logic. Discernment is the ability to detect God. Discernment is a radar that can find God even in darkness. Discernment can locate God where nobody can see God. That's good. Listen, there were people who were prayerful people in the time of Jesus. One man knew him when he was still a baby. God told him, you'll see the Messiah before you die. And when Jesus is brought to the temple to be dedicated, the man was waiting for them. He already knew who Jesus was. He went and took the baby from there. He said, Father, you can take me in peace now. I have seen our salvation. How did he detect Jesus? Out of all the children, wow. out of everyone being dedicated, he wow. could tell who whom the Messiah was. Wow. Without knowing the name, without knowing anything, without Joseph, do, without Mary giving at He knew mm. this is the Christ. This is our salvation. Yeah. Mm. Stop playing people talking about use discernment. Nonsense. If you have never walked in the light that you found yourself in darkness where you need to locate God, you have never received discernment. Amen. Wow. You have not received discernment. You don't know what you're talking about yet. That's good. Let's read one more. 1 Timothy 6.16 1 Timothy 6, 16. Mm -hmm. Who only hath immortality, dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, mm -hmm. whom no man hath seen nor can see. How can God live in light but you can't see him? Have you ever seen anything in the light that you can't see? It means mm -hmm. God is not found where light is. Mm. <laughs> light tells you he's in the area, but it doesn't tell you where he is. Mm. Amen. He lives in an, an unapproachable light that no one has seen. Wait, what? How can something be in the light but you can't see it? 
Amen. First Kings eight twelve. First King eight twelve. First Kings eight twelve. Mm-hmm. Then spake Solomon. The mm-hmm. Lord said that he would dwell in the thick darkness. <laughs> <laughs> wow. He will dwell, meaning his house, his habitation. He's not saying he will yeah. appear. That's yeah. where he lives. He's not Man. just thick. He's not just darkness, thick. Man. Meaning in the spirit, darkness has weight. There is thick darkness. Wow. Notice this, all these descriptions have nothing to do with light. Right. So light can be hidden in darkness. That's why the Bible says, the light shineth in darkness and darkness does not understand it. It gives it a completely different meaning now. The light shineth in darkness, but darkness comprehended it not. Gives it a completely different meaning now. Because your eyes are open differently. (sighs) Let me give you one more. Psalms 97 verse 2. And then I'll I'll, I'll, I'll go into what I was speaking. (laughs) Psalms 97, verse 2. Clouds and darkness are round about him. Mm -hmm. Righteousness and judgment are the habitation of his throne. A fire goeth before him. Uh, Restart again. Yes. Psalms 97, verse 2. Clouds and darkness (laughs) are round about him. Light, what is it? Clouds and what? Darkness. Darkness. Around him. Not light. Hmm. There's a time I had a vision of God, big time. I literally saw the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I have never been afraid like that. But they were in darkness. They were not in the light. But I knew it was God speaking to me. It was the most phenomenal experience of my life. You (laughs) don't... You don't see God the way you're thinking. Mm. And I think sometimes these fairy tales also are the ones that have messed us up. Man, that's so true. It is strange. Now, I think this deserves a part two. For me to go into what I want. Amen. So, so understand this. My desire or oh, somebody wrote something there said God gave uh, Abraham treasures of darkness which is true. It means that Abraham received revelation of treasures. Because Satan can't give you any treasure. That's very Amen. beautiful. Now, let, let, me, let me say it this way. This is why, guys, let me just, by, by this, that is why you cannot ascribe your knowledge of God to everyone. This is why you should never expect everyone to align with you when it comes to the things of God. Because you're not the same. Come mm-hmm. on, people. Yes. You're not the same. It's not the same thing. Mm-hmm. it's not the same thing people that one is a false prophet if you have so much power cast the demon out of them mm-hmm. why aren't you stopping them it's a spiritual warfare right do something mm-hmm. just say I don't understand this operation so God can help you but we call everybody a demon a devil demon. it's like, listen, false prophet is like how we sell eggs and, and, and bacon on the street. It's just like the most, u- in fact, it's so overused that it has lost its meaning. 
People saying, give your life to Jesus, false. Healing the sick are evil powers. Then which one is of God? The one you, you struggle with casting out demons. The one you struggle with healing people. You struggle with hearing. God. Which is the right one? But you see, all these things is because some people are just children. They have not even started in the light. The good thing about God, and I thank God that I am not God. Because if I was God, I would be bad. Mm, I would reprimand a lot of people. Thank God I'm not God because even me, I would have been probably among the reprimanded one. But <laughs> the good thing about God is this, is that God is so gracious, God is so merciful that he understands silly humans. So Amen. as long as you have the name of Jesus and your pursuit of him, he will value that more than even your weakness. that you would choose to use the good that you have in you to help others. And that just shows the, the strength and the might of our good God. That 1% of Jesus is, he will, uh, will outdo the 99% of bad in you. He can use that 1% to save people. That doesn't make you right, but the 1% you have is right. That's the beauty of our God. So I found myself in a strange place, children of God. I found myself in a weird, weird spot because I am in a place whereby I want to know how did Jesus spend his childhood? Because I'm still young, I can catch up and get myself together to be Can I be more effective? So I started digging and I, I found, started finding stories. <laughs> Jesus went, because you have to remember that we know about Jesus from the time he's born until he's 12. When the Lord Jesus gets to 12 years old, we know nothing about him until when he's 30, he shows up by the Jordan. Mm -hmm. That's a long time, almost 18 years. 18, right? Is my math correct? Yeah. For 18 years, we don't know what is going on with him. Or I thought, or I thought that. So I started looking into these things. This is years ago, many, many years ago. Some people said he went to India to learn with the mystics. Some people say he went to North America to learn this or he went to other places. Jesus was with gurus learning and becoming something more. Ah. I was like, okay, that's strange. <laughs> because Jesus did not represent any of those things. Because you have to remember the occultic idea is that everything can go together. That's how they get you. Everything can go together. Or you want to be a Freemason, just believe in God. That's, that's all you... <sighs> but it's a trap. Because once you vow, you enter, you can't come out. You are bound by the fallen ones. It will take God himself to save you. Uh, you know why we have a lot of uh, mental people on the streets? Eating paper, walking around. Some of them are genuinely sick people. I'm sorry to tell you majority majority I'll say it again majority of these people were in, in the occult and when they tried to leave they messed up their mind so that they don't mm. tell yes wow. what wow. I'm telling you is true wow they can't kill them so the best thing that they can do is take their mind so you see people who are wealthy, whatever, they're just, they just went mental. You have no understanding. Yo, how, how did this happen? We know this guy. How did this person just become like this? They messed up, they messed up their mind so that they don't tell. Mm. I've seen this in Africa. 
I've seen that here. I've seen that in many places. That's how the occultic world works because if you can talk, that's dangerous for them. Mm -hmm. So they just mess your mind up. Mm. Wow. You just go mental. They will take to the hospital. They won't figure it out. No medicine will fix it. Nothing will do it. But they do that to keep their secrets. Mm. Wow. See, somebody said it happened to my nephew. It's true. They do that all the time. Some people are saying, I've seen people who are pilots, rich people, and it happened to them. Some said, my uncle, my uncle, uh, uh, my uncle in Kenya, it happened to them or something like that. Yeah. These are real things. Amen. Somebody said, the man of God, Jim Ramirez, says something. I don't know what he said, but if you can post it, it would be nice. Okay. These are real things. <laughs> the operation of darkness is strange. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. Guys, there's a difference between a cult and, an, on, and the occult. A cult is different than, than the occult. So, but that you can research that yourself. But they are not the same thing. Somebody asked, is Hebrew Israelites a cult? Absolutely. It's not the old cult, but it's a cult. For sure. So there's a lot of these people that lost their mind. <laughs> Not because they lost their mind. They lost their mind because something happened to them. So I'm digging and I started finding interesting stories. I found books of people saying what Jesus did when he was a child and this and this. Even some stuff of the Quran came up, which is the worst book on earth. It's called the, the remix of the Bible. <laughs> In fact, a terrible remix. It's, it's not even a copy. It's a terrible, it, you could tell that the guys who put this together didn't know what they are talking about. But that's another story. They were like, oh, Jesus created, took mud and formed it into a dove, breathed into it, and it came alive. All those things sound good to some extent. Then I cried. I genuinely cried after searching and searching and searching and I was finding different things. I was conflicted. I was very conflicted because I said, Lord, I'm a big time failure. I have no guidance. I have no direction. Yes, your word says we should live like this, like this, but I wanted a tangible day-to-day -day thing that I can adapt. Like, Lord, will I ever become what you want me to be? I was very conflicted. And my beautiful Lord Jesus appeared to me. And he looked at me and he said this scripture to me. Can you find it for me? It says, um, the word of God is good for doctrine and this and this and that and that and that. Can you find it for me? I'm paraphrasing now. But he looked at me and he said, Everything you read or anyone has told you about me doing things when I was young is a lie. And it's the trick of the enemy to see yourself less 
than what I have made you to be. I was shocked. He said that three times to me. Because it's very interesting because the Lord has a way to answer your thoughts, right? Because he knows them. When he was saying that, I was like, how can it be? But he said, everything, everything you have read or you have been told of me doing miracles or doing things when I was a child is a lie to keep you from becoming what I desire for you to be. It is designed for you to see yourself less. Mm. It is designed to deceive you. It is not the truth. I have it, Papa, if you... Please. Okay. Second Timothy 3.16 all scripture is given by inspiration of God mm -hmm. and is profitable for doctrine, mm -hmm. for reproof, for mm -hmm. correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And I was still, I was shocked when he said this. I was extremely shocked when he said this to me. It was not recorded because it was not necessary. But there are things that are recorded for your own sake to understand and to know that I was no different than you. Mm. This is designed to make yourself see yourself less so mm. that you don't become have called you mm. to be. I was shocked. He told me my first miracle is recorded in the Bible. Does he not say this was my first miracle? I said yes then why are you thinking there were other miracles? My path was not supposed to be different than anyone else. For me to be a perfect sacrifice, I had to be a perfect human. For he himself suffered temptation, is quick to deliver those who are tempted. And Jesus learned obedience he had to be a hundred percent human. Now, of course, there are scriptures that give us clues about his childhood. If you want to look at them, we'll look into them if you want. Do you guys want to go quickly through them? Yes. Is that okay? Yes. Let's look at them if you would like. I think I have them somewhere here. Okay. Um, Luke chapter 2, verse 39, from verse 39. Okay, Luke chapter 2, from verse 39. Mm -hmm. And when they had performed all things according to the law of the Lord, mm -hmm. they returned into Galilee to their own city, Nazareth. Mm -hmm. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, mm -hmm. filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Mm -hmm. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. Mm -hmm. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. Mm -hmm. And when they had fulfilled the days as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem. And Joseph and his mother knew not of it. But mm -hmm. they, supposing him to have been in the company, mm -hmm. went a day's journey, mm -hmm. and they sought him among their kinsfolk and acquaintance. Mm -hmm. And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem, seeking mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass that after three days they found him in the temple, mm 
Mm -hmm. sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. Mm -hmm. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. Mm -hmm. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. Mm -hmm. And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Mm -hmm. Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? Mm -hmm. And they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. Mm -hmm. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and mm -hmm. was subject unto them. Mm -hmm. But his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. Mm -hmm. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Notice, he just grew. But let's look at this. This will help you see something. This will help you see something. <laughs> Matthew chapter 13, verse 55. Start from uh, verse 52 okay. to 56. Okay. Mm -hmm. Matthew 13 from verse 52. Mm -hmm. Then said he unto them, Therefore every scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven mm -hmm. is like unto a man that is an householder, mm -hmm. which bringeth forth out of his treasure things new and old. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these parables, he mm -hmm. departed thence. Mm -hmm. And when he was come into his own country, he taught them in their synagogue, mm -hmm. insomuch that they were astonished mm -hmm. and said, Whence hath this man this wisdom mm -hmm. and these mighty works? Mm -hmm. Is this the is not this the carpenter's son? Notice it tells you that they knew Jesus growing up. Mm, yeah. Just by that statement, when Jesus mm -hmm. came to his own hometown, because we know Jesus was born where? Bethlehem, right? But he grew up in Nazareth because he was supposed to be a Nazarene. This was a prophetic declaration of his own life. But when Jesus goes to his own hometown, people from his hometown look at him after he teaches and he starts doing these miracles. They say, wait, wait, wait a minute. Is this not the carpenter's, the carpenter's son? Since when did he start doing all, all these miracles? When did he acquire this Wisdom. It means for years Jesus was among them. He never did a single thing. So if you're looking for his childhood, that's where he was in his hometown. Keep reading. <laughs> Keep reading. Okay. From verse 55. Uh -huh. Is not this the carpenter's son? Mm -hmm. Is not his mother called Mary uh -huh. and his brethren James and Joseph? They knew all his brothers. They knew the whole family. They said, this, we know this guy. His father was a carpenter. They used to build stuff. When did he start doing this stuff? Meaning it was shocking. Keep reading. And Simon and Judas mm -hmm. and his sisters are not, are they not all with us? Mm -hmm. Whence then hath this man all these things? And they were offended in him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, save in his own country. Stop his, right there. Mm -hmm. They mentioned his brothers by name, his mother by name. They mentioned everybody to do with him because we know Jesus left home when he was 30. When he came back, he was doing supernatural things. So the Lord Jesus told me this. He said... The first time my father ever interacted with me was at the Jordan. Mm. All those years, I was studying, I was praying, but I was no different than anybody. I kept myself like you will keep yourself. I cried tears of deliverance because I saw for the first time a relationship I've been seeking was already given to me. I just had to accept it and grow in it. 
I was trying to initiate something that was already initiated. Mm. It gave me so much peace. I was delivered that day. Amen. And he told me, even though I am his beloved son, ranking is earned. It is not given. Mm. Even though we'll speak about that another time. But in short, this is what I learned. When the Lord spoke to me to teach you today, he put this in my heart for me to share with you. Stop seeking secret knowledge. If you can't make use of what is revealed in scripture, what are you going to make use of any secret anything? Mm. It means you're pursuing something else, you're not pursuing God. Mm. Because people feel this sense, oh, I read the book of Enoch, so what? I, I, I read the, the, the book of Joshua. Okay, cool. So what? How did it make you closer to God? Oh, you know, there are things they took out. Well, the things they left, how has it benefited you? Let's assume they really took out stuff. Okay. But what they have left, if it has not improved your life, do you think there's this secret knowledge that is just going to make you day and night like that? You see, that is the same thing that got Adam and Eve. Yeah. This is the exact same thing that got Adam and Eve. Same thing. What God has given you, what have you used? Amen. It is enough so that the man of God is lacking nothing. The scriptures are given to profit everybody. That's why Jesus said, even what I did will not compare to the things you and your generation will do. For greater signs shall you do. I was shocked. I realized that now this was me, myself. That the reason why they did not record all his miracles is because he didn't want them recorded. God didn't want them. They said there will be so many books that there will be nowhere to keep them. But do you know what that will do? It will crush your spirit. Because Jesus doing all those things, he said, you will do more. Yeah. Hey. If you knew all those things, you start trying to do them. Mm. He's saying, no, you need to start in a better place than me. Mm. That's so good. That's good. I was free that day. Amen. Then I started studying myself and I realized I no longer call you servants, I call you friends. The Bible says he has become the firstborn of a new creation. We have become co-heirs. We share into what the Father has given him. I was free that day. The pursuit of knowledge will get you to st step on a landmine. And by taking it off, you may explode. It's dangerous. It is dangerous. You are not far from God like you would think. Mm. When did Moses meet God? How old was he? Yes. How old was Abraham when he met God? Yeah. And there were some of the most dangerous people that walked with God. Yeah. You are not far the way you think. I want you to grab something you want to give to God. To tell God thank you. Some of you may need to listen to this twice or three times. I need you to share this with somebody. Because there's such a desire for the supernatural, but people are going about it the wrong way. Yeah. There's such a profound yearning to see God, but people are going about it the wrong way. There is a right way. The Lord Jesus is the gate to the supernatural, not knowledge. 
Knowledge can get you in danger. And some things are better not left unknown. Because if you know them, then you can't do anything about it, then what? Look at how many people have destroyed themselves because of conspiracy theories online. They live in fear now. So, I love you. May God bless you. Go give and then we'll come back and pray. God bless you. This is Dr. Prophet Lovi Elias, UK. It is your time. Europe, it is your time. I will be in London at the Evolution London. It's going to be powerful. It's going to be anointed. There will be deliverance. There will be healing. There will be a move of the Spirit like we have never seen before. Europe, it is your moment. London, you have been chosen for this assignment. The Lord is with us. I will see you there. God bless you. A Christian thing. Revelation Church. Revolution. God bless you. This is Dr. Prophet Lovi Elias, UK. It is your time. Europe, it is your time. I will be in London at the Evolution London. It's going to be powerful. It's going to be anointed. There will be deliverance. There will be healing. There will be a move of the Spirit like we have never seen before. Europe, it is your moment. London, you have been chosen for this assignment. The Lord is with us. I will see you there. God bless you. A Christian thing. Uh, Revelation <laughs> Church. Revolution. God bless you. This is Dr. Prophet Lovi Elias, UK. It is your time. Europe, it is your time. I will be in London at the Evolution London. It's going to be powerful. It's going to be anointed. There will be deliverance. There will be healing. There will be a move of the Spirit like we have never seen before. Europe, it is your moment. London, you have been chosen for this assignment. The Lord is with us. I will see you there. God bless you. A Christian thing. Revelation uh, Church. Revolution. For my future like Romo I used to keep taking the wrong road Now watch how I'm breaking these strongholds Yeah, you made me beautiful You know that you the go. You came and gave me a song I was lost, now I'm found Then you sent me I was blind, now I see 2020 
One of my daughters here asked me a good question, and <laughs> I'm going to use the, the same answer I gave her. The Bible says that Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature and in, in favor with God and with man. I'll say that again. Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature, meaning as he increased in in the wisdom of God, it means he did not have it fully. It grew. He increased in wisdom and in stature, meaning he was also growing as his wisdom increased, meaning that it was a process. It wasn't a one-time thing. Because you have to understand wisdom comes with age. So the Bible is telling you he grew in wisdom and in stature. The Bible also says he grew in favor with God and with man. It means when Jesus was born, he was not favored. The favor increased. So when you have to pray for favor, don't feel like you're in bad company. Even he had to grow in favor. He had to grow in favor. Because he grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God. And favor is always because of faithfulness. You favor those who are faithful. Men don't favor you just to favor you. Oh, man, that person, you know, it's a, you know what, let's give them this. Let's do that. It's the same thing with God. So if you are faithful, favor increases. with God and with man. So don't feel like you're in bad company if you need more favor. Just learn to be faithful. Father, I bless your people. Increase them. Change their lives as you have changed mine and even more. Reveal yourself unto them. Show them your grace and your mercy. I thank you for your goodness and who you are that you do not change, you remain the same. Bless your people now and eternally in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen. Well, I love you. Share this. Let somebody be blessed by this. In Jesus' name, Amen.